It's a struggle to get up here this morning. It's good to have the pastor and his family and all them back with us this morning. And uh, the Lord laid on my heart a passage of scripture that the pastor dealt with not too long ago. And maybe it's been longer than I thought. But the devil comes on the scene and he says, uh, you better not go there. <clears throat> He's already dealt with that. <clears throat> of course, y'all may not have heard him, so he wants me to remind you again of some of the things that's going on. Preaching on potentials and possibilities. In Hebrews chapter number 11, we realize that it's a faith chapter. And all the people that are mentioned here, they did what they did by faith. They all had potential. They all had possibilities in life. And in Hebrews chapter number 11, there in verses 22, and then there in verses number 23, and down through verse 29, it talks about a man by the name of Moses. <clears throat> verse 22 says, By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to the years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Steaming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians, saying to do, were drowned. If I just mention the name Moses, uh, what do you see? What kind of mental picture do you get in your mind just looking at uh, this man by the name of Moses? Uh, I think of different images, but some that comes to my mind... Uh, I think of the image that uh, Charlton Heston played on the Ten Commandments. Uh, I went and saw that uh, many, many years ago. And then later, I didn't go see the animated uh, uh, film that presented another image of Moses, the Prince of Egypt. Uh, you may have saw that. Uh, one thing that I noticed, and that is, uh, Moses never seems to age uh, he looks the same in the 80s as he did as a teenager. Bro. And uh, that can be done in the film industry. You, you can make things turn out good or bad or keep you in a mystery. But when you, when you turn to the most reliable source uh, concerning the life of Moses, uh, then you have to turn to the Word of God. From here, you're able to form an accurate opinion uh, of the man God used in such a remarkable way. In my 51 years of service for the Lord, um, one thing that I have pursued in the Scriptures, and that is accuracy. Uh, what does the Bible say about certain, certain things? Uh, and in our Sunday school class, uh, we take things apart. Uh, and I'm glad that we can do that. We ask questions, and we try to figure out what God is trying to say to us um, in that, that moment of time. Um, so, one thing that you find when you study about Moses, and that is, um, he'll bring you back again and again to reality. Um, I find here was a man that faced many struggles. Um, he didn't always handle them correctly, um, 
but uh, who in spite of all of his sins and shortcomings, uh, here was a man that had potential, and God's going to use him uh, uh, to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. Um, and uh, as I read about him, uh, concerning the things that he did and he went through, um, I find myself sometimes nodding my head and saying, I understand that. And I've somewhat uh, been there in that situation. And so if you're here and you're thinking, uh, no way that I can be used of God, uh, then you're wrong. Uh, who knows what Red Sea experience that God may send you through um, or who could ever tell, maybe God will send you into a wilderness, a spiritual wilderness, uh, where you will have to cry out to God. Um, or maybe He may let you drink some bitter water of some sort uh, uh, out there in the world. Um, but when God does use us, uh, you will find yourself in a very grateful um, and humbled as Moses once was. Um, one thing to remember, and that is... Um, you are a product of the time of our day. All of us are. Uh, we all have potential. We all have possibilities uh, to be used of God. And so it's important to keep that in mind um, when you're considering uh, your life. Um, we cannot and must not separate a person uh, from their times. In other words, uh, we're living in a difficult time. And we're living in a time when Satan, I feel like, uh, is working very hard because he knows that his time uh, is short and he's trying to destroy and defeat and tear down uh, and trying to get people defeated in this walk of life. Um, even men of my ministry, after 51 years of ministry, uh, and uh, he comes on me concerning different things, uh, just like the message this morning. You better not preach that message. Uh, that's already been preached. That's already been proclaimed. Uh, listen, devil, I've been at this thing long enough. If God said it, I believe it, and I'm going to do it. So you might as well just listen to what God has to say. Um, always remember, Moses became God's man for a transitional period uh, in his life. Uh, you remember, here he is, uh, he spent 40 years down there in Pharaoh's court, uh, uh, and he's trying to prove to the world uh, that uh, he wants to be somebody. Uh, and we know that uh, he come to a place that he said, I refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Uh, so he spent 40 years in Pharaoh's court uh, trying to be a somebody. Then one day, uh, he saw some brethren as uh, they were struggling, or an Egyptian uh, beating up on an uh, 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 Israeli, uh, and uh, he jumped in there, and by some means, uh, he killed the man. And uh, we know that Pharaoh finds out what he has done, so he's going to have to flee for his life. And he goes uh, into the wilderness, um, into a land of Media. And we know down in the land of Media is where Moses uh, got his B.D. degree. Uh, B.D. degree, backside of the desert degree. Uh, and there he was, and we know what happened there. Uh, the bush caught on fire, and an angel spoke out of that bush concerning Moses after 40 years uh, back there in the wilderness, uh, and, or in the desert. Uh, and we know that he has tried to be somebody in Pharaoh's court, uh, and now here he is on the backside of the desert, and, and uh, he's, he's been a nobody. Nobody knows where Moses is at. Uh, only God does, but he's a, a nobody. Uh, and then after the burning bush, and he goes back down to Egypt, and, and God leads him through the wilderness for some 40 years, he, he's trying to prove to the world that a nobody can be a somebody for the glory of God if you listen to what God is trying to tell us to do. So we know here, uh, uh, when God's going to use you, God's still looking for men and women and who will believe Him. There was Amram, and there was Joshua, and, and uh, they had uh, Moses there. And did you realize that the, the, the decree came out that all male babies uh, are to be thrown into the Nile River? They're to be drowned. And so... Uh, we know that Jochebed, uh, uh, the mother of Moses, uh, she partially obeyed uh, the king of the day. She did throw him into the Nile River. 
The only thing is he landed it in a bassinet that had been pitched in and out. Uh, and so she did, she did do what uh, the king said to do. So here he is. Um, uh, from his birth on, the world would never be the same. And, and we find the story about him in the book of Exodus, uh, which means a departure or a going out. Um, and so it records the departure of Israel from Egypt uh, when they had lived there for some 430 years. Uh, and they'd entered the land as a small family, about 70 people, uh, when they went down there. And now uh, they're going to be led out and there's going to be a couple of a million of them. And so Pharaoh's going to finally let them go. Uh, and uh, we know that it was a long journey from there to the land of Canaan. Now, they could have done that in a couple of weeks uh, and made it all the way into the land of Canaan. But because they were somewhat baptistic uh, and they refused to listen to God, it took them 40 years to get there. That's the way a Baptist does. Shake your head. Amen. Genesis 50, verse 22. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he in his father's house, and Joseph lived 110 years. So he was probably around 39 year old when his family uh, came to set up a shop in Egypt. Uh, he lived for 71 years. And then in Genesis 50, 26, it says, so Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and they put him in a hope chest in Egypt. That's what a coffin is. A coffin is a hope chest. Uh, when uh, my mother and my daddy both passed away, uh, uh, I didn't just put them in a, 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 in a casket. Uh, I buried them in a hope chest uh, because they had a testimony of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the free pardon of sin. And, and so I put them in a hope chest. Uh, one of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. Glory to God. And, and when the trumpet sounds, every born-again child of God that's in the cemetery is going to get up out of that hope chest. And God's going to give them a new glorified body like another the Son of God. And the Bible says, and we're going to go up to meet Him in the air and so shall we be with him and then what a what a day that's going to be when we all come together to rejoice in the lord and then in exodus chapter number one verse number eight now there arose up a new king over egypt which knew not joseph A lot of people today don't know anything about the struggles that America has been through. I never went through the Depression. Some of you did. I never witnessed World War II. I was born shortly after that. But there was a lot of men went to the shores of other countries and died for our nation in order that we might have the freedom that we have today. There's a lot of people that are forgetting what has happened in America. I did go through the Vietnam thing. I did go through partially the Korea thing. Uh, and then there's all kinds of battles that are going on there now. And then we know that the Bible says as long as it's time, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Uh, and so there's a war going on even today in the land of Israel. Think about this. Uh, what is it that they want right now? What, what good thing would Israel welcome more than anything else uh, at this moment of time? Peace. Peace. And the Bible says there's going to come an individual uh, that's going to come and going to promise them peace. Uh, and uh, we know that when that happens, uh, we know that started, well, the church is going to already be out of here. I'm going to be with the Lord during that time when all that's going on. And I'm grateful for that opportunity. Um, then we notice here in Exodus chapter number 1, verses 9 and 10, and, and uh, it says, And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there, when there uh, falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Let me go ahead and read verse 11. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. 
And they built for Pharaoh treasured cities, Pithom and Ramses. Uh, they're no longer sheep herders, but they're brick makers. No, no longer are they living a, a life of peace and joy, and they're not today either. They're in a battle for their life. Uh, so their neighbors, the Egyptians, begin to look at them very differently. Uh, uh, they begin to look at them with uh, suspicion and distaste, and and uh, they finally turned out just uh, just outright hatred for them, and that's still going on. Uh, then, in look in Exodus chapter two, verses twenty-three, and it simply says there, uh, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel signed by reason of the bondage, and they cried. And their cry came up unto God by reason of their bondage. Verse 24 and 25, And God heard their groanings, and God remembered His covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. What is a covenant? Where do you find that covenant at in the Word of God that God made with them? Well, you've got to go back to the book of Genesis, chapter number 12, uh, and you'll find the covenant there that God made, and that covenant was an unconditional covenant, uh, and that covenant is still good today for the land of Israel. And He's going to make sure that that is fulfilled. Uh, and God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. God heard their cry. He had not been sleeping, just like he's not sleeping today for us. Uh, he's very much awake. Um, he's uh, waiting for uh, somebody to do what God wants us to do. So we know here, slavery here has not stopped the population growth. They're still producing children. If it's a girl, then fine. Uh, but if it's a boy then uh, he's out of here. Take him and throw him into the river. But there was two women. Remember those women? Here was two women uh, that were potentials uh, and possibilities. And God's going to use those two women, uh, and uh, they're going to save the, the boy babies. And what are they going to do? They feared God, it says, uh, and the fear of God always works in the lives of those uh, who will uh, who will listen to him? And so the king she he he questioned uh, uh, these two women concerning uh, uh, the children that were being born. And what was their excuse? Uh, it said there that when uh, he asked them about why they were not performing the duties of the midwives. Uh, and by the way. Uh, Mid, I, I don't know about you, but I was birthed into this world uh, by a midwife. Uh, uh, Miss Annie Dean, that was my grandfather's sister, uh, uh, whose, whose husband was killed uh, when she was a very young woman uh, at a shingle mill. Uh, and she turned out to be the uh, uh, midwife for the community. I think she birthed every child there. But if you'll notice there, uh, these two women said... Uh, and uh, when uh, these uh, when these Israeli women when when they're on the birth stool, uh, I don't even want to go there. I don't even know, want to know what that looks like, Brian. I don't. When my wife went to the hospital to have our children, I left it up to her if she wanted anesthetic. I wanted it, but they wouldn't give it to the husbands. <laughs> I'd been more than glad to have taken uh, something uh, uh, in order to ease the pain. Our first one took us three days to get her here. And uh, Habersham Hospital, where they were born, and uh, I got so tired of sitting in there I'd go out and sit under a tree and I'd pick the grass. And then I'd come back in. And they'd say, no, the water's not broke. And so I'd go out and pick more grass. And then I'd come back in. And after a while, they said, well, we believe uh, the baby's coming. We believe the baby's coming. And she did. All ten pound of her. Big baby. 
My wife found out she could have big babies, so the last girl that was born, she ate ice cream, dill pickles, and all that good stuff, and she come out weighing 11 and a half. God heard their cry, though. He feared, these women feared God. And uh, they couldn't deliver the baby because the baby was already there. I don't know about these guys who, when their wife is in the hospital and they're fixing to have a baby, uh, and they come through the door with camcorders uh, and a hat on their head uh, and a, a party hat and Domino's pizza and say, I'm here. He's asking for trouble. You go, into a, a, you go into your wife and she's fixing to have a child. She's as dangerous as a nobleman preacher with lip slick. Better leave her alone. You better leave her alone. They feared God and they saved the baby's lives. Uh, many place, in many places, God's people are being persecuted for their allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. And many are standing fast. And they're saying, we will not do what you're asking us to do. In Exodus chapter number 1, verse 21, it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. Uh, now, I really don't know exactly all that that consists of. Uh, Perhaps it meant they found husbands, they married, uh, they had children, and God allowed them to have a home for them. I don't know how God dealt with the midwives. I believe maybe he rewarded them for doing the right thing. Maybe the Hebrew women were fast. I, I don't know. But verse 22 of Exodus, chapter number 1 and Pharaoh charged all the people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. China, I believe it is, at one time. They could only have one child. Now I understand they can have three children. And I understand if you have more than three children, they find you $100,000 for every child over three that you have. I'd have to give mine to the government. Amen? I've gave you a long introduction. And now I've got three points and I'll be done. Hard times don't erase God's promises. These people found themselves in difficult times. But God has promised them, I'm going to send you a deliverer. And Jochebed, the mother of Moses, knew that he was a proper child. I think every mother thinks their children are proper. I think they, you know, you, you, you see a new mother come in and she's got this bundle of joy all wrapped up. Uh, and she'll say, come here, pastor. Uh, and they'll uncover him and says, ain't he pretty or ain't she pretty? And they're red and wrinkled up. And you better go ahead and just lie. Say, oh yeah, that's a cute baby. <laughs> Because if you don't, you're going to get in trouble. I had one woman, she says, Come here, Pastor. Come here, Pastor. Look, ain't he, ain't he pretty? He was ugly as homemade soap. <laughs> but I didn't tell her that. As times go hard, It's easy to come to the conclusion that God has forgotten His promises. But God has not forgotten His promises. You may forget. I may forget. The whole nation may forget. But God cannot forget. In this era of moral decay and 
when there's wars and rumors of wars and our nation is reeling to and fro and there's the scandals that's coming out of Washington and there's all the politics. But don't think for a moment that God has forgotten you nor this nation. God determined before the foundation of the world. I've never understood why God loved me as I preached on last Sunday. But he did. He did. The earth may melt. The Bible says the stars are going to fall out of heaven. But the living God will not forget what he's promised in the word of God. We've all got the matter. We all are potentials of God using us for his glory, whatever it is. Uh, I didn't know what God was trying to do to me when I was a younger man. But yet I'm glad that I had just enough sense to listen to God and follow him and do his will. Second point, and that is harsh treatment doesn't escape God's notice. Uh, if you think pastoring for 51 years has been an easy task. It's not. When the pastor's been at it 51 years, I'm going to come and see him. Exodus chapter number 3. What God said to Moses in verse 7 and 8. And the Lord said... I have surely seen the afflictions of my people which are in Egypt uh, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Uh, verse 8, And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians uh, and to bring them up out of the land into a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites and all other ites. Out there. It's been a difficult year. It's been a difficult 10 years. <coughs> pastor was elected pastor here on, is it May the 2nd or May the 3rd? He was elected pastor the 3rd. I had a heart attack the 4th. I had a heart attack before he even got started. But God notices. You may become discouraged. You may become filled with pain. Begin to think that God doesn't care about the circumstances that you're going through. I can't even go to church without getting a text on my phone. You've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. I've got a doctor's appointment Monday. I've got a doctor's appointment Tuesday. I got my right eye fixed last week, and I can see more out of it now than I can afford. <laughs> and now I'm going back and get the other one fixed, and I know I'll probably see as much out of it, too, out of that piece of cake don't let it bother you but the devil is a liar he's tried to defeat me in every way in the world stop preaching stop teaching the word of God God may split an ocean somewhere for you that you can walk through on dry ground God may put you in a wilderness somewhere where he has to feed you with manna. God may put you somewhere where you have to drink better water. Send you out maybe to put something into the water and make it taste better. His coming may not come in your timetable. Number three point. Heavy tests don't overshadow God's concern. Remember how God rewarded the midwives? He misses nothing. The future out there. 
may look bleak. In the, in the, in the rare moments of, of, of life, I said in my study last night, and I pondered, and I asked myself, God, why does the devil do what he's doing? Why is it that we can't get some relief? Just because we've been doing this a long time doesn't mean the devil's going to leave us alone. God is looking for those women who will yield to his purpose and cease the day of his glory. He's looking for potential out there uh, of, of men that will take up the cross and follow him. He's looking for young people that will go into the ministry, not for just the money that's there, because we know that the money is not there. Ain't that right, Pastor? Look at the resumes that a church gets. Look what they're looking for. May God raise up young men that God will put a fire in their bosom like Jeremiah and they just desire to preach because God has called them to preach the Word of God. Known fact, we'll soon be replaced. Somebody else is going to sit on the pew where I sit at. Somebody else is going to lead the choir. Somebody else is going to play the piano. Somebody's going to stand in the choir where you stand. Somebody's going to stand behind this pulpit. Not me, not Pastor Scotty. I pray that God will raise up somebody that fears God. Just like the pastor fears God. I fear God. Tommy fears God. Christy. Somebody else will play the piano one day. But may God raise up somebody that, that fears God. Your promise. Listen, this came from a preacher's son. And he said, I'm a promise. I'm a possibility. I'm a promise with a capital P. I can be anything that God wants me to be. You are a promise. You are a possibility. You are a promise with a capital P. You're a great bundle of potential. And if you'll listen... You'll hear God's voice, and He'll help you to make the right choice, whatever it is. Thank you for coming this morning. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you that you're still calling people to do your work. Those you may call may not seem qualified. But you qualify those who are called. Here this morning, God, you may be dealing with somebody who needs to say yes to you. Thank you that your work will be completed in your time frame. Thank you for the possibilities, the potentials that may be here this morning that are here to hear the Word of God. For that mother or dad that's sitting here, maybe the little boy, little girl, that's sitting beside them, they don't have a clue how God's going to use them. But they're putting their trust in you. And I pray, God, this morning that you will use them. Speak to the hearts of those that are here as they come to sing this morning. In the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. As we stand, is God calling you? Hey guys, Pastor Scotty Gerard here, and I just wanted to say thank you for joining us today. We really hope that this has been a resource that's helped you grow in your purpose for God, but also grow in His glory. 
We also want to extend an invitation to you to join us here in person at Harmony Grove. We are located at 1008 Town Creek School Road in Blairsville, Georgia. We would love for you to come be a part of our service, to be a part of our small groups. If you have children, we have children's classes on Wednesday night and on Sunday morning. And all this information can be found on our website. We'd also like to continue help you in your growth with Christ. If you have a question, maybe a prayer request, or just need to talk to somebody, you can contact us in the emails below in the description, or you can also contact us through our app and through our website, which are also found in the description below. Again, we hope this has been a blessing to you because we know that you joining us today has been a great blessing to us. Thank you so much. God bless.